Hi, my name is Caitlin Marsh and this is my final project for UGS 302, Italian Counterculture Heroes. So I did a painting to talk about um, a lot of the important parts of Dasha Marini and Pierpaolo Pasolini's works. And this is what it looks like. Essentially, this is the River Tiber. The reason that I picked the River Tiber was because it was a spe specifically outlined in Marini's work. I'm more unsure whether it was referenced in The Street Kids by Pasolini, but it was specifically in Voices. And the reason I picked the River Tiber is not only because it's one of the most gorgeous settings in Italy, but also because both Marini and Pasolini went out of their way to paint pretty pictures of Europe, even when they were exposing the uglier parts of Italy. So this is just one of the most gorgeous settings in Europe to me personally, so that's one of the reasons I referenced it, especially because Marini outlined it in Voices. Um, when she was talking about Michaela Canova going throughout Rome. Uh, I want to say about chapter 11. But when it came to symbolic choices in the painting, this is one of them. These are pink oleanders. They're a flower that comes on a bush. But the important thing about pink oleanders is that they were referenced in the very first chapter of Voices. I want to say exactly on the first page. And what made them so important is that pink oleanders in floral language actually represent the complicated nature of relationships. So the reason I put those in there is because, for the most part, that's exactly what Voices by Dasha Marini is about. It talks about the complicated nature of relationships in the workforce, especially among the family, but it's just talking about how relationships among people are not as black and white as everyone thinks they are. So that's one of the reasons I put them in there, and I found it really brilliant of Marini to reference that the first chapter, because if you do understand floral language, it's like the first thing that sticks out to you. But the main reason that I picked a painting was that you can really hide stuff in a painting, and that's what I feel like a lot of a lot of what they did in the novel, especially because um, when it came to Pasolini and him constantly getting censored, a lot of his themes were kind of hidden, even if they were kind of in plain sight, but they were still hidden within his novels. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this in the painting, and based on how evident each of their themes were, was how bright I made their themes. So Lumpen Proletaria was obviously the largest. It's why Pasolini got censored a lot because he kept speaking about the class nobody wanted to talk about. And I had to make that the center of the River Tiber just because it's so important. It's integral to um, Pasolini's work and really Italy, Italy's counterculture movement at the time. So I wanted to make sure that that was incredibly visible for the viewer to see. And then up next we have sexual violence. Sexual violence was incredibly important in Mara Ini's novel. That's especially when she went out of her way to advocate against, and I just wanted to make sure it was incredibly visible on Mara Ini's side of things. I also put gaslight, because gaslighting is not only the word of the year, actually, but one of the reasons that it's incredibly important is that Michaela Canova and her process to um, uncover the truth about what happened to Angela Bari's death was constantly being told lies and as if they were the truth. And until the very end, we didn't really know the story of what happened to the Bari sisters and why their stepfather was out of the picture, etc. Um, right here, we've got mental health, and then above it, it's very hard to see, but it's actually overwork. Overwork is especially hard to see um, because it's not a major theme in either um, in Pasolini's novel, and it's not really a huge theme in Mara Ini's either. But personally, it's something I'm actually passionate about, and I did notice that it was brought up, so I wanted to make sure that it was in the painting. And overwork and mental health came into play when Michaela Canova was starting to go, um, starting to see Angela Bari in places that she shouldn't be. Even when she was no longer looking at the case, she it was like she felt Angela Bari there, and that was because she had been overworking herself, and especially because that's the way that her father passed away. I wanted to make sure that we talked about how important mental health and avoiding overwork actually really is. And then up here in the corner, we have feminism. You can kind of see it if I angle it this way. And this is just because even though Marini never explicitly calls herself a feminist, she was a large proponent of the feminist movement at the time, especially in Italy. So I just wanted to make sure that was in there. And then we have classicism. This is more of a reference to Pasolini, especially with his work, The Lump and Proletariat. I didn't make it as visible because his largest focus was on the Lump and Proletariat social class. But I still wanted to talk about how he did expose the differences between the classes and especially how certain classes were discriminated against the Lumpen Proletariat. But this is the painting. Um, it took some time, but I was really glad I did it, especially because it. Um, I liked that it, just like Dasha Marini and Pier Paolo Pasolini painted pictures of Rome people didn't want to see, that's what this is, and it represents how they went and called Rome gorgeous, but they talked about how its social standards needed some work. So this is my final project. Thank you for listening.